Okay, Albuquerque, good afternoon. And of course, others tuning in uh, from around New Mexico. We're here for one of our regular COVID updates as we like to do during these challenging times. And today we actually have some reason to celebrate. And uh, not only the substance of the federal stimulus package, which is gonna be our focus today, uh, but also wonderfully we are joined virtually uh, by our two senators uh, for the great state of New Mexico, Senator Ben Ray Lujan and Senator Martin Heinrich. And so the Duke City is so fortunate to have these two senators uh, fighting for us in DC. And they have really delivered for Albuquerque and for New Mexico and for America with this stimulus package. So I think I would just remind everyone that, you know, we believe from day one that we had to carve our own path here in Albuquerque in terms of how we're gonna deal with the pandemic. And it really just matches the unique situation of our community. But part of that was because we knew the safety net was so important in uh, our sort of major metropolitan area in the middle of the city. So being able to step up for the central New Mexico region, I think was a hallmark of 2020. And it obviously took a lot of resources, including resources from the federal government. Uh, we were so grateful to get a large chunk of money, 124 million, that literally allowed us to do everything that you saw last year, whether it was rental assistance or whether it was handing out small business checks uh, or keeping police and fire operating in uh, times of uh, financial constraints. And now luckily in 2021, we are receiving another uh, chunk of funding to allow us to sort of continue this path of uh, keeping our safety net up and running, keeping childcare going, and hopefully will allow us to, to ride out the rest of the pandemic. Now, what I wanna do is really uh, begin with, we're so fortunate to be joined by our two senators, I'll hand it over to them uh, just very shortly. And so uh, I will just mention that um, all their efforts have to do with a lot of aspects of keeping our community safe and healthy and running and supporting our businesses. So when you talk about 1.9 trillion, there are a lot of details. I understand it's like a 600 page bill. And so we are working through some of them, but we're able to share a little bit today. And that's really the focus of this. And then lastly, uh, what we'll do is the senators are kind enough to take a few questions and then we'll pause and we'll continue with our sort of local COVID update where we'll go over the stats, how close we are to going green and uh, how we're doing with respect to other cities in uh, with respect to the different COVID health measures. So we'll do that sort of after. So with that uh, in no, uh, I guess in seniority order, uh, let me begin um, with uh, Senator Heinrich and hand it over to him, Senator. You bet. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, thanks for all the leadership that you and the City Council have really shown in Albuquerque and to the region. Uh, I miss my days on the City Council. I always like to joke that uh, in those days, all I had to do is count to five. Uh, it's a little more difficult than that here, but uh, we certainly got this across the finish line and it's enormously impactful for New Mexico. Uh, you know, I like to say that this new law uh, with uh, is really the beginning of the end of this pandemic, uh, both from a health point of view and then obviously and, and most importantly uh, with respect to what flows to the city from an economic point of view. Uh, the law really delivers critical support to state, local governments, and tribal communities that have all uh, taken on water in the midst of this pandemic. And uh, I'm excited to say that there will be another 114 million of revenue replacement directly to the city of Albuquerque. There'll be specific programming like $32 million in transit grants, as well as 132 million to the surrounding county. Uh, so I, I hope that Mayor Keller, after we get a chance to share some details, can also talk about the importance of just how these, uh, how this revenue replacement helps make sure that, that Albuquerque's police officers stay on the beat, that, Albuquerque's firefighters stay in the station and uh, that Albuquerque's solid waste workers are still picking up your recycling every week. Uh, in addition, it's really a lifeline for New Mexico's local restaurants, performance venues, and small businesses. And we worked in incredibly hard to do a new program in this bill that is funded at just over $28 billion in one-time grants to stabilize restaurants. And we all know how challenging it has been for our local restaurants 
uh, to continue operating with the kind of restrictions that we've had this year. And there's so much a part of our, our culture as a city uh, and a state. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, in addition, there are gonna be enhancements to the Pay Tech Protection Program, uh, as well as Save Our Stages is gonna come online here in the next week or so as the administration rolls that out. We also expanded the employee retention tax credit, which is really important for a lot of businesses uh, to be able to use to keep people employed uh, that's, that's something we obviously really want to encourage. And then on the healthcare front, I'm excited because of what this bill means for ramping up the national vaccine campaign. Uh, that's part of the, you know, making sure that this is the beginning of the end for this entire, uh, what's been a very tough year for folks, $20 billion to really supercharge vaccine distribution nationwide. And I was really proud to include provisions specifically to support vaccine delivery through the VA Health Administration here in Albuquerque and Indian Health Services. Uh, for individuals, you know, we, a lot of people have heard about the $1,400 direct payments, uh, but also uh, the child tax credit. Um, the investments we make in the child tax credit this year are the single biggest uh, child poverty reduction that I, I can remember in my lifetime. So I want to make the point, one of the ways that you're going to be able to have access to both the child tax credit, the direct payments, you have to file your taxes. Hopefully you did that last year and then it's just automatic. If not, file your taxes this year. Uh, you can always go as well to irs.gov forward slash coronavirus forward slash get my payment, get hyphen my hyphen payment. Or if that's too complicated, just call my office. We'll, we'll get you the HTML um, so that you can make sure that you're, you're getting what's coming to you. We also passed enhanced federal unemployment benefits, um, financial assistance for rent and utility payments, which I know is something that Albuquerque's really stepped up on the rent side. Uh, enhanced SNAP benefits, and some specific housing and homelessness programs. Finally, I just want to mention um, with respect to APS and our state schools, this is a real investment in getting our schools reopened and doing it in a way that is safe for students, safe for teachers, safe for all the staff. So $1.2 billion for New Mexico's K-12 public schools, 95% of that flows directly through to local school districts so that they can make investments in, in technology, air filtration upgrades, paying for sick leave, uh, investing in outdoor classrooms. So we're looking forward to getting all our kids safely back in school. And while it may not feel like it yet, I am really confident that the historic rescue package that Senator Ruhan and I just voted on really is the beginning of a return to something that's gonna feel so much more like normal. And as we continue to see the vaccine roll out, and I'm so proud of Albuquerque and the state of New Mexico, how, how quickly the virus is, or the vaccine is making it into people's arms in our communities. That's, that's how we get back to normal. And so thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Senator Lujan, for your incredible work on this package. And we look forward to continuing to work with you to make sure that you can implement this as quickly as and effectively as you possibly can. Thank you so much, Senator. And uh, lots of good information there. And let's uh, hand it over to uh, our other great Senator, uh, Senator Ben Ray Lujan. Well, thank you, Mayor Keller, for bringing us together today to discuss the American Rescue Plan and for your leadership during this difficult year and also my gratitude to the city council of the city of Albuquerque as well. And of course, thank you, Senator Heinrich for your continued partnership in the Senate, um, your leadership and always putting New Mexico first. Uh, you make a difference in people's lives every day and it's an honor to work with you. Look, one year into this pandemic, America is turning a corner. And as Senator Heinrich pointed out, New Mexico, uh, we're also making progress, leading the country with vaccines in people's arms. The number of COVID cases in New Mexico continues to fall. Vaccines are being deployed at a quickening rate with 
nearly 30% of New Mexicans having received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. And as Senator Heinrich pointed out, there is also more investment in the American Rescue Plan to be able to only make progress on getting vaccines in people's arms. And in Albuquerque, students are looking forward to returning to class safely in the near future. But data is not destiny, and now is not the time to lose sight of this important goal. We all have a responsibility to do our part. And the American Rescue Plan signed into law by President Biden last week, passed out of the House and Senate, will play a key role in stopping the spread of COVID-19 so that our communities can recover and rebuild. Uh, the American Rescue Plan includes significant investments to put vaccine shots in the arms of New Mexicans and expands both testing and contact tracing. It makes strong investments in hospitals and community health clinics. It even makes healthcare coverage more affordable by providing larger support for middle and low income families. Uh, that's not received a lot of attention, but it's going to make a difference in people's lives. The American Rescue Plan also puts money into the pockets of New Mexicans to recover from this economic crisis. Uh, as you all know, it delivers immediate financial relief like the $1,400 payments that many of you have already received. Um, and uh, for those of you that haven't, uh, keep an eye on that. And if you're having a, a challenge or you haven't received this payment or payments from the CARES Act or from the package that we adopted in December, make sure to reach out to one of our offices so we can help you navigate that as well. It also provides enhanced unemployment benefits, nutrition assistance, um, provides support for struggling families, frontline workers, bearing the brunt of this crisis. Now, as Senator Heinrich did remind us, and I want to thank every one of you that's covering this press conference, and we want to ask everyone out there, um, every journalist, every news outlet, to make sure that you're helping to explain the child tax credit, because we need every family in New Mexico to take advantage of this program and to learn how it's coming to them. The refundable and fully refundable child tax credit that will benefit 95% of New Mexico's children and their families. If you're a single filer earning under $75,000, ahead of a household earning less than 112,000 or joint filers earning less than 150,000, you will see the full benefit of the child tax credit. That's an increase from 2,000 to 3,000 for kids six to 17 and 3,600 for those under the age of six, um, which is an increase from $2,000. Um, so you can see how significant this is to families across New Mexico. But it's not enough to provide direct relief to households without supporting the communities that sustain them. And the American Rescue Plan includes a top priority of mine since the start of this pandemic. Um, I worked with my colleagues to introduce legislation in the House called the Coronavirus Community Relief Act. Senator Heydrich led that in the Senate, and that is now part of the American Rescue Plan. And that provides relief for every county, city, village, Pueblo, and tribe in our state. For the city of Albuquerque, as has been pointed out, an additional $113 million investment to address budget shortfalls and keep essential workers like police officers, firefighters, teachers, sanitation workers on the payroll. And it ensures that residents don't lose the essential services that they've come to rely on, like trash pickup, local park maintenance, ambulance service, and more. Bernalillo County, our state's most populous county, will also receive another 131 million in addition to that investment to the city of Albuquerque. So New Mexico's communities uh, will also be able to tap into a $10 billion critical infrastructure project program to carry out key projects like broadband deployment. In addition to that 10 billion, there's another 7.2 for emergency connectivity to reimburse schools and libraries for connecting kids, students, teachers, uh, which is another priority of ours in New Mexico. Uh, we can't stop until 100% of our state has access to fast, affordable internet. And ensuring that local governments have the necessary resources to continue their essential functions is common sense, it's an effective approach, and it's going to help New Mexicans during this pandemic. So I wanna thank Mayor Keller again, the city of Albuquerque, to all the citizens of the city, and to all of the press that is covering this. Thank you so much, and again, Martin Heinrich, uh, our senior senator, my appreciation for your leadership and look forward to more important projects for the good of the people back home. Senator Keller? Sorry, Mayor Keller. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, and well, well put and uh, articulated by both our senators and 
Uh, Senator Ben Ray uh, Lujan, also thank you for mentioning some of those details around uh, the city and both of you for highlighting this importance with the tax deadline that's coming. And as a reminder, our city also, uh, city council and myself, we did pass taxpayer protection with respect to tax filings. So now there are some real regulations and penalties in place for folks who are misrepresenting uh, the information that you just shared. And so I think uh, Burkenos are in good hands uh, with respect to going to get that advice from their tax professional. So let me round this out with a couple of more um, uh, aspects of this, and then we'll take a few questions. And I would just echo the wonderful news that Senator Lujan shared with respect to the amount that Albuquerque is going to get, about 113 million. Of course, Bernalillo, as he mentioned, about 137. There are some pieces in here, too, that are for our uh, transportation department, as you know, running the buses. Uh, there's also a piece for aviation. And in aggregate, you know, we look at this as roughly 300 million for, you know, central New Mexico slash Bernalillo County and Albuquerque. And uh, just as a footnote for media who was on my previous media event when I said uh, the uh, county was getting 300, that's the aggregate number. <laughs> so uh, we're giving you the correct information right now. So, um, okay, now here's what this means for the city. I think most importantly, you know, we were in desperate times last year. And when I say desperate, I mean, we were looking at budget cuts that literally would have had to cut police fire, trash pickup, bus service. Um, and if you think about even the things we did, like keep the planning department open so we could keep construction going to keep working families working, all of this was at risk. And fortunately, we were one of the few uh, cities, unfortunately for everyone else, but we were one of the only cities in New Mexico to get uh, direct funding last time around. And I just wanna emphasize that that literally saved Albuquerque city government. We would have had to do hundreds and hundreds of layoffs had we not gotten that money. The good news is we did get it, we put it to good use, and uh, the story this time around is simpler, and it's also the same, meaning that basically our revenues that we collect as a city and so forth, uh, you know, we have some challenges. We know GRT isn't the same and the different business taxes, and they're roughly down uh, they are picking up, by the way, which is great news. So we are seeing good progress and we've fared much better than other cities. But this is going to allow us to continue to provide all of that without having to make those cuts that would have been detrimental to our economy. Uh, and so with this funding, we are going to be able to keep feeding hundreds of thousands of seniors. Uh, that's something we've been committed to. We are going to be able to keep our bus uh, services open, which we found out were actually very critical for people getting health care and even for things like getting groceries. Uh, we are going to be able to keep taking care of our homeless population. As you may recall, we've had up to five hotels in Albuquerque filled with folks who are unhoused. We're going to be able to continue those things. We're going to be able to continue the rental assistance for folks who are getting evicted. And I think we're also going to be able to continue the vaccination efforts. So the city right now, uh, we do the management, not the actual the Department of Health, of course, does the actual vaccination, but the facilities, the parking, all the staffing, volunteer coordination, we do that for about six uh, centers a week right now, roughly. And we're going to be able to continue that because of this funding. And so on top of that, as a dad of young kids and APS, um, our schools are gonna get some desperate help. And so APS really needed this. And so we're so appreciative of that aspect of this funding too. Uh, and of course, for the unemployed who are still gonna get uh, that additional funding. And again, for parents, especially working parents with that child tax care credit, there's even funding in here for domestic violence help as well. So uh, we really appreciate this. And, and I think the timing in terms of the amounts and the timing uh, really line up well, because I believe we're gonna have a strong recovery. We're anticipating the sort of Nike swoosh uh, that's different than a V-shaped curve. So it's gonna take a while, right? It's gonna be gradual over 2021. But I think this funding is gonna get us through to fall and get us through to the winter. And then I think we're gonna see Albuquerque and New Mexico uh, really come out ahead when you think of our economic development programs that we have in place, whether it's Netflix or Orion, which I noticed in New Mexico, we're now calling this the Orion Project, which I just, I just love that. It's the Spanish pronunciation of Orion. So we're gonna go with it. We're just gonna start calling them Orion. So uh, it is gonna employ thousands of New Mexicans uh, as long as it follows through. And then of course, Netflix, NBC Universal, and then a lot of our homegrown companies filled with robots, 
even Los Poblanos that we announced yesterday, all expanding in 2021. So with that, uh, we have some help for Bricanos when we need it most. And then we're gonna be on our path to recovery. So I'll pause there and I think uh, perhaps Matt or Lorena or someone is gonna kind of coordinate some Q&A if there are some. So I'll hand it over to our team. Yes, sir, thank you very much. So we're gonna start with uh, Jessica from the Albuquerque Journal. Hi there, Senators. Um, I had a question about the distinction between the CARES Act and this. I believe local governments were fairly restricted under the CARES Act. They could not use this that money for revenue replacement specifically. Are they allowed to do just basic revenue replacement with this new relief money? Yes. It's much more flexible and the city itself can then manage uh, where they have the most needs and don't have to sort of, it, it, it's dramatically more flexible. Um, also, I have a follow-up for the mayor. When and how will you determine like where this money goes? I mean, you mentioned many, many programs, many things you used CARES money for. How do you decide, well, this chunk is going to, you know, senior meals, this chunk is going to rental assistance? So the good news is this funding is coming uh, really good in terms of timing for the city of Albuquerque. So we're in the process of getting ready to send our budget down to city council. I think that happens in April. And so, uh, and, and, and then of course council would make uh, accordingly their changes and pass the budget. So we're gonna be able to build this into the budget. And so it's actually like, it's literally the perfect timing to do that. So uh, we'll be able to answer all of those questions for you in the upcoming weeks as part of the budget process. We do know that just from a strictly city budget perspective, as I mentioned, this amount of money pretty much fills the hole that we have from GRT. Uh, so we do expect this to be very similar to what we did before. And as Senator Heinrich mentioned, it's much more flexible. So we don't have to do quite as many sort of accounting uh, alterations and so forth. But the numbers line up really where this is just going to be able to keep us going. Um, and also, I would mention that there is a little bit of a timing issue. I think we get half the funding in 60 days and then the other half. Uh, I think a year from now, if I have that right. So we'll have to adjust for that accordingly as well. So we don't, we don't quite get the full check right away. And the only caveat I would add is that, for example, this, the, the transit piece that is just specifically for transit, there are things that are passed through directly to individual programs. Those things can't be changed, but the overall, the 113, 114 figure for the city is, uh, is flexible and potentially revenue replacement. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We're going to go next to Nancy Laughlin with KOAT. Hi there, Senator Heinrich. Can you go into more detail about the help that this would mean for restaurants? And Matt, if you don't also mind, I'm just emailing details about the funding, if you can email that as well. Overall, thank you. You bet. So this is, um, I believe the, the overall figure uh, nationally was 20.6 billion that we were able to put into this program. And the difference between it and previous rounds of help that at times were utilized for restaurants is this is a grant program. It's a one-time grant program to help people bridge the gap. It's not a loan. Um, the Small Business Administration will be, uh, is as we're speaking, starting to set up the guidelines uh, for applying for that. Um, and it is very focused on small and family restaurants. So we had real frustration uh, in New Mexico in particular with uh, chains that were effectively very large getting at the front of the line vis-a-vis -vis, you know, being on the computer at 4 a.m. Eastern time and really sort of gaming the system to some extent around the, the PPP program in the past. This is, uh, this is not open to large chains. It is family restaurants. It's restaurants with less than 10 total uh, uh, locations. So it's really gonna be focused on the kinds of restaurants that are so ubiquitous and so much a part of our fabric in, in the state. And Nancy, if, if I could just add to that, that $5 billion of this fund will be set aside for restaurants that have grocery seats under $500,000. So 
you can get an idea of uh, who this is targeting. And what I very much appreciate with this program, as Senator Heinrich pointed out, and Mayor Keller, under the CARES Act, we know that a lot of small businesses were really pushed aside. They were not getting the support that they needed until we had to intervene under the Trump administration. For this program with the small restaurants, the first three weeks of the application period, the Small Business Administration will prioritize awarding grants for women, veteran, or socially, economically disadvantaged owned businesses as well. So the smallest of the small will get the priority out of the gate. And, and I think that's important to recognize. And I would just quickly add in what's great is because the federal system is really managing this, you get around the problems when, when we did this at, at the Albuquerque level, you know, we had all these issues around like, well, your business is in Los Ranchos and they're like, well, you know, but so this is a, a much better way to do it because, you know, we often had this challenge around, you know, we had to use city boundaries for ours. And I know as most of us, whether it's going to a restaurant or owning a restaurant, we serve the, you know, Albuquerque market. And so this is also a better way to handle that issue. Okay, great. Next, we're going to go to Myra Aguilar from Univision. Has a question about the second gentleman's visit. Hi, senators and hi, mayor. Um, I want to ask your opinion about um, the second gentleman visiting Albuquerque tomorrow. Um, it is also going to be about promoting the relief package um, as part of the tour with uh, Vice President Harris. Thank you. I, I think anytime we get a visit from someone associated with the, the White House and the administration that brings a focus to Albuquerque and to the state of New Mexico, that's a positive thing. And uh, we're, we're thrilled to have uh, Doug coming to New Mexico. Yeah, we are. We're excited to welcome him to Albuquerque and uh, showcase all that makes us special. And so um, we're hoping it'll just be the first of many. Okay, great. Let's go next to uh, Grace Reader. Thank you all for your time. I think I'm unmuted. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you, Grace. Great, thank you. Uh, you'd think I'd be able to figure out Zoom at this point. Senators, if you could talk a little bit about funding for healthcare, the pandemic has certainly highlighted some of the issues that we've had with health services here in New Mexico, uh, lower bed capacity than other states, more health problems. Um, is there money in here that you think can help uh, New Mexico hospitals and our health system moving forward? The, the piece of this that I am most uh, had been focused on is just the deployment, the rapid deployment of additional vaccine and, and supporting that in, entire focus. Um, ben Ray, did you have anything to add more broadly on, on healthcare deployment? So rural health clinics as well. At oh, Senator yeah. That's a great out. point. It's not just um, the investment to help get more vaccines in people's arms, but it's also that investment in rural health clinics to not just get vaccine in people's arms, but a substantial investment in them directly, number one. Uh, number two, I would argue that some of those emergency broadband grant uh, programs, as well as infrastructure, <laughs> will help with the delivery of care and improve that dramatically, including in rural communities across New Mexico. And then third, an important part of this program of the American Rescue Plan is we now understand that, look, when people get sick, especially under COVID, we've learned you should be able to see your doctor. And in order to be able to see your doctor, uh, healthcare needs to be as affordable and accessible as possible. Included in the American Rescue Plan was additional support to help make healthcare more affordable for low income and middle income families. I think that that's important. And that builds off of the work that the Biden administration did from day one in opening up uh, people being able to sign up for the Affordable Care Act again. Um, and so this is just another investment to make healthcare more accessible, more affordable, more vaccines in people's arms, contact tracing and uh, improvements in uh, investments with rural healthcare uh, clinics. One of the things I've been really pretty excited about in the over the course of the the last couple of months since the Biden administration uh, got their you know got in the door has been the increased coordination with how they're doing vaccine distribution. You know we we now have this third vaccine from J and J coming on, 
It's a one shot uh, vaccine and it doesn't have the cold requirements that, for example, the Pfizer BioNTech uh, vaccine has. And the thoughtfulness of their work with our offices, with the State Department of Health, uh, with agencies like the VA and Indian Health Services to make sure that the right vaccines are going to the right places when you have a complicated state like we do, where you have clinics where you know, some of these requirements are not gonna be made. So we need to get the, the, the right vaccines to the places in rural areas and then use the more challenging storage requirement vaccines like, um, like Pfizer in the places where we have that infrastructure. And the level of coordination there uh, is only gonna increase now with this additional funding for that program uh, and the willingness of the Biden administration to actually use uh, the tools that they had, uh, the Defense Production Act as, as a tool to scale this vaccine uh, and, and purchase additional supply and manage the supply chain is why you're seeing such a high uptake uh, and, and such a good working relationship with the state of New Mexico. Okay, thank you very much. At this point, I don't see any other questions in the queue uh, for the senators. And so I think we can move into our uh, regular COVID update. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Senators. It's great to see each of you and uh, keep fighting for us up there. And we just appreciate all the work you do each and every day for America, New Mexico, and Albuquerque. Uh, and great to see each of you too. Take care. Thanks for having us. It's an honor, Mr. Mayor. And again, to, to your team and to all of the journalists that have joined us today, thank you for uh, sharing this information, for the reporting that you've been doing across New Mexico. You're making a positive difference but please continue to share this information with you Mexicans. Thanks for what you do every day. Don't forget to file your taxes. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much, guys. All right, we are going to uh, go to our uh, biweekly statistics with respect to COVID and share a couple of announcements in terms of where the city's at. Uh, let me do a couple of things. First, I think let's go ahead and change gears to our uh, PowerPoint. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the screen here with folks tuning in. And uh, first up, of course, we always want to look at how close we are to green. Um, and I think we have a little bit of mixed news on this, at least based on our estimates. Uh, you can see we continue to have a decreasing positivity rate. That's excellent. That's how we got to yellow. The other criteria on top there, the positive cases per 100,000. Uh, you see us uh, going, you know, from 14 down to 12, and then our, our sort of unofficial interim count as we do on the off weeks. Uh, we show us going down another percent, which is good, a little bit more than a percent. But I think if you also consider sort of the trajectory of this particular figure, uh, the good news is we're going in the right direction, but it's flattening out a fair amount. And so we do need to get to eight. And uh, I mean, if you just do some, some quick math on this, we're at least three weeks away uh, from green. And you know, chances are it's probably a little bit further than that. So uh, let's just uh, ballpark that hopefully by the end of April, we can get to green or sometime in April. But um, it's unlikely that it's gonna happen next week. But again, these are, you know, this is like forecasting the weather. These are un unofficial estimates. And so we'll see, maybe we'll get a pleasant surprise next week, but I think for everyone's expectations, we're not expecting to see green next week. Uh, and that puts us again, another two weeks out, which puts us into April. And so hopefully uh, St. Patrick's Day will signal a green April. Um, now, I would also just mention though, that again, these numbers are going in the right direction. So that is a good thing. And we just need to keep doing what we're doing and we will get there. Now, relatedly, if we look at our city comparison and we think about, again, how throughout the pandemic we have been literally a healthier place to live by almost any measure, uh, that continues to be the case. So the trends that we've seen, uh, of course, as a reminder, all the way from the beginning to October, we were number one in, in a good way in terms of number of positive cases and um, things like percent positive. We were always very high on tested. Uh, since October, we've been one or two in those categories. Um, there's one category where Austin beats us, one category where Denver beats us. But uh, you can see across here the number of positive cases 
uh, we're just doing, uh, frankly, a better job than everywhere but Austin on this list. And if you look at some of the degrees of magnitude, you see El Paso, Salt Lake, Phoenix, LA, still you know almost double the rate we're at. So in, just in a much different position in terms of uh, the number of folks who are positive. And that holds true on our other key metric down here at the bottom too, with percent, uh, po the percent positivity. Uh, we're in a very good place. Again, Denver is slightly lower uh, and uh, Los Angeles has done a great job actually uh, ramping up their testing. So their numbers have improved quite a bit. Uh, you still see El Paso uh, in a very difficult position. Uh, and interestingly, Austin, not quite as good. So especially when you combine these two metrics, uh, we are still doing the best in the region. And that story has been true all along. So if we look at this over time, you can see uh, again, these graphs, this picture has not changed in a long time in a sense that uh, we've been at the right end of this uh, graph, which is this curve right here is Albuquerque. And you can see us, we're the lowest other than uh, Austin throughout the pandemic. And you still see, again, this grouping up here, El Paso, Salt Lake, Los Angeles, Phoenix, really having problems uh, with respect to that um, cumulative confirmed number rate. Now, I'm going to flip past a few of these just because they're more of a muddled story where everyone's kind of in the middle of the pack. Um, but in terms of percent positive, again, you see this over time. This one is really just from the beginning of the year till now. And you see, we just did a outstanding job in the course of January, getting our numbers down. And now you see us at the low end of the curve um, and uh, joined there by a couple of other cities. And good for the American West, essentially. You do see all of these going in the right direction. Of course, we believe a lot of that is, is also because of vaccination. So uh, that's great too, which brings us uh, to our vaccination numbers. And the county continues to keep at pace uh, respect to the Albuquerque uh, area here. And so we're, we're just a hair below uh, where New Mexico's at. And, um, you know, as a reminder, we are based on population. You would expect us to be harder to vaccinate on a percentage basis uh, because there's more of us. And so there's a, a volume and a delivery challenge. So far, we've been able to weather that. So we appreciate uh, the Department of Health and UNMH and Loveless and Presbyterian and even Walgreens and Optum and everyone involved in this. And you see that also in our uh, percentage of residents uh, fully vaccinated as well. And you see both of us, uh, the city and the state, uh, leading the country in this measure. And so that continues to be the case. This map probably we will stop using because it doesn't show that much anymore. Uh, but uh, now the good news for America is that a lot of these other states are also just catching up with respect to vaccination. So uh, you can just see, you know, here there are a few states that are lagging behind, which are the lighter colored states. Okay, so I think with that, what we'll do is touch on a few announcements and, uh, and then we'll take some, if there's any more questions on this. So with respect to a couple of things in the city, uh, we do want to remind folks that we've, we have been getting, uh, we still do enforcement. Uh, although our enforcement requests and calls are very uh, down, uh, they're really there now we're talking about about 20 a week. And so if there is interest or anything, we can forward you to the fire marshal for those. But uh, a lot of the, the complaints and the questions and everything have gone way down. Uh, which is a good thing, but we still do continue to follow up on them when we get them or when we know about them. Uh, one that we did get quite a bit of that we just wanted to mention uh, is the kind of live music outside performance space question. And so we do want to clarify that it is permitted right now under the health order at 25%. So we've been getting a lot of calls about like Sawmill Market and Revel and some others, and we have checked on them and they've been fine. But I think it's, it's really because people don't think you can actually have those open at all. Uh, but in fact, you can at 25%. And so our enforcement has really been focused on clarifying those rules when people have questions um, and working with local businesses so they can stay uh, reopened. And when they do make a mistake, uh, most recently in the last few weeks, um, we haven't had anyone uh, push back on the corrections that we've asked them to make. Um, and lastly, I would just say that uh, I mentioned our uh, emergency operations center 
uh, in the last, uh, so far we've supported 31 distribution sites, about 10,000 doses uh, in conjunction with other entities that we've done through the city. And we have 13 currently scheduled uh, through the end of the month for about 6,800 doses. And so appreciate all the work for everyone at the Albuquerque Emergency Operations Center uh, for being a true uh, partner for uh, the healthcare providers and public health department uh, to make these happen. Okay, I think with that, we'll take some questions if there are any. No questions yet. Let me give folks just one second here. I think we're good to wrap up. Okay, well, we will probably see you again in uh, two weeks. And again, next week, we'll look for that official number uh, to give us another indicator how close we are to green. And in advance tomorrow, happy St. Patrick's Day. Take care.